Hey everybody, this is Kenny Cash from Factory Underground Tech, and I'm sitting here with my good friend Greg Tobler at his studio, Tobler Audio, and today we're gonna to be discussing some Atmos mixing. An engineer is looking to get into mixing in, um, whether it be surround or full on immersive or whatever, right. would, what would you recommend be their starting spot? If anything, would it be their converters or their speaker set up or like thinking, you know, thinking that they want to build into it. Maybe some people want to jump right into it and that's a bigger yeah. commitment. So what I would say is get the Dolby Atmos renderer. Um, that's, that's like the first thing, because once you have that, you can mix you know, you can move things around um, and listen to it in, in the binaural re-render, which is two channels. So without buying any new speakers or converters or any of that stuff, you can get into the Atmos game, and that's like with Logic or, or Pro Tools, um, Nuendo, fill in the blank, you know? Yeah. Cool. Um, but, but yeah, that, that would be my starting point, would be to get the, uh, the Atmos renderer and learn that. Yep. So yeah, we talked a little bit about getting started, right? Um, obviously, you've got a nice Lots set. Lots of speakers. You've got a lot of speakers here. There's a there's multiple thousands of dollars here with speakers, right? Yep. Um, if you're getting started in this world, right, and you said one of the things is the um, Atmos Bridge, the Dolby Atmos Bridge, right, or renderer, right? The renderer, yeah, you want the Dolby Atmos. Dolby Atmos yep. renderer. And would you be able to, with the Dolby Atmos renderer, do you think a good starting spot, if you did not have the budget, would be headphones? Is yeah. that possible? Hundred percent, you know. So mixing on headphones or just stereo speakers, but like, so one of the things um, that I am constantly doing when I'm working on all of the big speakers is um, listening to what it sounds like folded down to on headphones. Mm -hmm. um, and in the renderer, they actually give you an output um, specifically for that. So now the renderer, when you're when you're listening or monitoring back in headphones. Mm -hmm. Would is it always a folded down version, or is it can be kind of at least you know doing the phantom thing where it's it's moving around? It's well. folded down so that it plays back with like all of the you know it's it's a my understanding of it is it's an emu it's a folded down emulation you right know, like a binaural yeah. re render is what they call it got it um, so it has an element of movement right. you know so you can get a sense of like oh there's something else going on um but that's a great way to get started and you need to listen and i can't stress you know enough how much when even if you're in a huge room like this where you have all the different speakers and you're listening to it all expanded out you need to listen to what it sounds like folded down right because that's how a lot of people are going to be experiencing it because the thing i think driving the market right now is um, like the Apple AirPods, right. you know, that's two two channels. Um, you know, the AirPod Maxes, you know, like the sound bars, and, and those are, um, a lot of them are stereo, you know, uh, or I should say two channels. Right, right. Because it's not stereo. Yeah, yeah. Um, um, yeah, how to describe that was interesting for you, and I was like, why is it going around your head, you know? Yeah. It's a bi binaural re-render, yeah. yeah. Monitoring wise, how many speakers are you using? Right, so I have a, um, a 7.1.4 um, set up here. And um, that seems to kind of be the sweet spot, I think. Like you can go up to 64 discrete speakers um, in a system, which most people don't have that kind of a budget, you know, to, you know, get like, <laughs> you know, 64 ATCs or something like that. Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but um, so, so, 714 or 9.1.6, you know, seem to be the, that's about as big okay. as for music, I think a lot of people are doing. Um, and that, that gives you, you know, four overheads and then seven, you know, speakers around you and then plus the sub um, for, for 7.1.4. And, and monitoring wise, is there a specific interface that you recommend for right. this? Yeah, so monitoring. So it's like, how do you get all the speakers to go up and down volume wise at the same time? Right, right. that's always the question. Um, so I use the um, the Avid Matrix box, okay. which is the really a digital audio Denmark, you know, branded as by Avid. Um, amazing piece of hardware. Um, and um, that has uh, software control, the Dadman software that, that lets you define your inputs and outputs and build your your grid out. Um, 
And um, so that's what I use for all my monitor control. It also gives you um, EQ and delay compensation mm. um, with the SPQ card. Okay. Um, that's certainly the, the expensive way of doing it now. Um, there's the Matrix Studio that Avid came out with that actually has the SPQ card built into it. Um, I do think for Atmos, having some sort of a room correction is really, really, really <laughs> useful. Because if you think about it, like when you're working in stereo, people are like, okay, you know, you have two speakers, you design the room around that, you know, like your bass response is, you know, predictive, you know. Yeah, yeah. And then now, like once you, if you're in immersive and like things are all around you, you have all sorts of um, issues that, that come up just as a function of your room. So having having that room correction software to be able to tweak um, your room uh, is really important. Yeah. Um, but yeah, we're using like the general, like the GLM. That's gonna be the next question. G GLM is great for that. Um, and I think you're gonna see more speaker companies start to integrate in some sort of DSP into yeah. their their thing. But I, I like the, I use general, like, um, yeah. For, for my I got them on your, upon your recommendation, <laughs> so yeah, I'm loving them right now. And it's just getting used to like you know the GLM software and stuff like that has has been really cool. Yeah, when it comes to immersive, I think it's you go with service, um, you know, ability to get somebody on the phone, you know, be able to get parts. There there are so many Genelec speakers out there. Like they're 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 never going to go away, or at least in the near future, they're not going away. Um, whereas like with some of the more boutique brands and specialized things, A, they don't have DSP built in, um, and B, they, uh, you know, it's harder to get things moving, you know, with them. Um, but the other thing too is hard mounting hardware. Like how do you hang these things on your ceiling? Right. Um, and being able to get like the hardware that like looks nice, first of all. Right, Cause right. you can, I mean, you can put anything anywhere, but you know, getting it to look nice, that's a whole nother thing. <laughs> well, that's, that's an important part of the mm -hmm. studio experience. So. I agree. So one of the things that we share is a love for gear and geeking out about yeah. gear, right? Yep. <laughs> and what would you say some of the gear highlights that you might need for Atmos or immersive audio? So right now, primarily, you're in the box. Um, so if you need to do any sort of an analog process, you need to do it before you like are like, OK, I'm going to go immersive. Um, at least that's been sort of my approach mm -hmm. you know, to, to it, and uh, which is what we did for your, yeah. your record. Absolutely, you know? yeah. 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 Um, and so mi mixing immersive wise, I use Pro Tools, mm -hmm. um, but I know Logic now has it built in to Logic, and that's three hundred dollars. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> um, and uh, also DaVinci Resolve has has it built in now too. There there are some workflows with Pro Tools where you have two different systems that you can integrate all your outboard gear into it and do more of a traditional like you know use all the stuff that you love. But that's a very costly. Uh, endeavor right now, mm -hmm. which I think it will change. And, you know, as things get, you know, more evolved, I think it will, um, you know, that that cost barrier will come down. Mm -hmm. Are there any favorite plugins you have for Atmos, maybe not necessarily specifically for Atmos that work with Atmos, right. um, may have worked also in the stereo situation, sure. um, but that you are finding yourself really enjoying um, with the Atmos experience and immersive audio? So a lot of people think that they can't use their mono or stereo effects plugins in Atmos, and that's wrong. Um, you can, you can move, you can move it around because it's all object based. You can have something ping pong between this speaker and that speaker, or this speaker, that speaker kind of thing. Um, <clears throat> as a stereo effect. So you can take like a mono source, expand it to stereo, and still have it do some cool stuff because you can move it around right. with, with the um, you know, panner. Yep. Um, specific Atmos effects, because um, now there are plugins coming out that are designed specifically you know, to emulate like a space. So there's right. a couple of reverbs. <laughs> um, there's um, uh, Symphony Reverb, um, New Gen Audio has some great plugins. Um, their their Halo Upmix 
plug okay. in that goes from, they do mono to stereo, stereo to 5.1, stereo to 7.1, stereo to Atmos. <laughs> you know, it's like, it just keeps going. <laughs> um, those, those guys have some great, great tools out there. Um, and um, the, the other thing that I really, really enjoy using is uh, this Eventide 9000, which is a hardware box. Mm. That's that, it's not on right now, yeah. um, but it's, it's that, that white, yeah, that's white guy back there. Um, <clears throat> that box lets you build your own plugin. Um, like, like you, you, well, they have an open source thing on it where you can like build your own plugins right. in it um, or you can stack you know things that are already pre-configured right, and right. You can build it but but that um, I use that with a Dante interface so that actually has 32 channels in 32 channels out Wow so you can have multiple 51 inputs and outputs right. into it um, and uh, that I found that it's really cool for creating some of those more like out there you know, effects. Um, and I think you're going to see more, more yeah. plugins even coming out. Cool. And deliverables, right? So this is a little bit different, right? We're not delivering just straight up wave or MP3s at this point, right? So, right, so right. what would be the deliverables in this case of immersive audio? Right. So, so the way that I do it here is I'm working in Pro Tools and I play from Pro Tools real time into the Dolby renderer, which that is a capture device. And so that actually records all of the pan information and the wave files and, and creates the master file. Dolby Atmos master file. And um, that's where you can generate your ADM file um, from. And um, so you can you can deliver out like the clients um, from once you have that master file um, created and you've printed into it, um, you can kick out MP4s for reference so that they could listen on like a sound bar at home or um, on a phone because like all your iPhones and everything support Dolby Atmos playback. Right. Um, and uh, also laptops, uh, and it, or you could also walk into a pro studio or or like a huge theater, like a Dolby theater, you know, the, and play that file in it, and it would upmix into that that whole space. Right. So. And what's the name of the file actually? Because right, it's a. I believe it ADM file. ADM yeah. file. Okay. Yep. Cool. <clears throat> cool. I have like one or two more questions, and then we'll be out of your way. No, I love uh, it. I love having you guys here. <laughs> but um, yeah, I think what I was going to ask, you mentioned we talked about deliverables, yeah. right? And you called it a master file. Mastering is a little bit different for Atmos, right? Right. One of the big things that, the, that we have more in Atmos just in general is space to play with, right? right. And, you know, I know when we had, a, when we had you know, uh, worked on the project that we were working on and yeah. I was like all like excited about like having this like big space to, to not have to worry about crushing a dynamic range. Right. And uh, then I got home and I was like, oh my God, there's too much dynamic range. I, you know? <laughs> right, <laughs> you know? <laughs> right, so, right. Oh. Yeah, so along those lines, one of the really cool things with Atmos is you have dynamic range, right. um, which if, we rewind history back to the 90s where it's like, let's make records as loud as possible. Yeah. And then you get to the 2000s and it's like loudness wars. Yeah. Um, and there's like no, like things are like that, like within an inch of their yeah. like clipping constantly. And then sometimes you go over and clip it. Um, so we went through that. We decided that, okay, that, that like is a bit much, you know, mm -hmm. like let's have some dynamic range and you, you can impact you know, better. And it's, in TV, we've always had this because for TV, nine times out of 10, you're mixing for negative 24 as mm -hmm. your average volume. Right. So that means from negative 24 all the way up to zero, well, negative two is what right. they, they spec, yeah, right. um, that you have that amount of dynamics. Right. That's a lot, Oh yeah. you know, and, and that's completely different mixing for TV versus for music. Because music, it's like, make it loud, you know, master it, you know, like you're averaging up around like negative seven, you know, a lot of times, or eight or nine. Um, and so with, with Atmos, we've brought everything back down to a good spot where you have a creative space to be able to dynamic wise, you know, have things like pop out and like scare you, you know, as opposed to like being like, oh, we're just loud all the time. 
And there are some rules that you were explaining that labels might have and as far as like right. when, when you're delivering these pieces. Um, yeah, there, so it, it's the Wild West right. out there. And I think that this format, um, people can do what they want with it. And I think they should do what they want with it. Um, but when it comes down to who you're working for, for delivering, um, they may have some very specific rules that they want followed. Um, and a lot of those are uh, driven by legal issues, you know, like, um, for example, having the vocal not panned in the center, you know, or, or sorry, having not having the vocal just in the center, center speaker, speaker um, having it be a phantom center between a left and a right. right. Um, and having it having it just be vocal in the center, and the legal reason for that is um, being able to lift it for samples and you know copyright infringement. But I think that that is kind of lame, honestly. <laughs> Fair <laughs> enough. Because like as a format, I think that you know you should use it how you should you want to use it, um, and um, that that that's one of the the like legal. Uh, the lawyers driving how you're mixing, yeah. you know, sort of thing. Do you want that at home? <laughs> <laughs> um, but but I, I do understand it. And, you know, the, the bottom line is you, you do need to play by uh, the rules. And ultimately, you're working for someone. Right. Um, and, you know, do what they want. Yeah, and that leads me pretty much to, like, our final question, which is where do you see this going in the future? Obviously, we said you don't believe it's going away, right? So it's only going to make advances, and if yeah. there's anything that you kind of foresee happening or magic gear that you want built for you <laughs> as, you know what I mean? Um, um, I, uh, I, I think that this format is really cool. This is something different, and, and everyone that I've talked to, you know, has that similar sort of response of like, like, yeah, you know, there's like Laserdisc and then there was like Blu-ray and, you know, this is different because it's a scalable thing and it's software driven, not a hardware, like, you know, you don't have to go buy the box to like do the right. playback. Like it's in your phone yeah. <laughs> um, and um, and it's on your Apple TV. It's, in, it's you know, uh, IP based more. Um, so I, I think it's going to stick. I think it's a lot more fun mixing in Atmos than just stereo. Um, as an engineer, you know, who is like, you know, you go through, you learn how to like make the kick drum sound really good, <laughs> you know, and yeah. like get the good guitar sound, get the vocal, you know, to like sit, like sit in a mix. Um, and then like you're doing a lot of like wash, rinse, repeat of, of that, you know, in your career. And then all of a sudden you're handed this brand new tool that like instead of like oh I I can just move the guitar over there and then like pan this like you know thing over here like put the keys over here and like all of a sudden there's more space instead of like fighting to try and get it you know like through two speakers so I think there's a fun factor to it as an engineer um, but also like there's a there's definitely a cool factor um, but as, as a serious tool, I think it is the thing that, like, unites the different um, formats, like going from just mono stereo to 5.1, uh, 7.1, 7.1.4, 4 channels, doing ambisonic, you know, like, you know, and binaural. Um, I think for podcasts, it's way cool to mix in immersive. Wow. Um, and, and to be able to have like something else, mm -hmm. you know, going on sonically. Cause like when you mix into the renderer and like you, you do a binaural re-render down, um, you, I hear stuff like that's not normal stereo. Right, yeah. <laughs> um, and it's cool, you know, so I think it's gonna stay. Sweet. Well, thank you, you very much. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, thanks very much for talking with us, thanks. and and I hope it was it was a good conversation. Yeah, man. Um, glad to geek out with you anytime, and you know, can't wait to work on the next project. I got some things in the works, and awesome. you know, feel free to send anything over that you want to share with us. Totally. Well, thanks for having me. Yeah.